So in this video, we're continuing the airbrush review series, and today we're looking at an Iwata High Performance Plus. Iwata makes a few different versions of this airbrush, but the one I have today is called the HPB Plus. I prefer this model just because it comes with the smaller paint cup and it's gravity fed. Inside the box, you get a quick start guide and a sticker. You also get a small tube of Iwata lube. If you want, you could add a small amount of this on the needle and then wipe it off, and it just helps it glide smoother through the needle packing screw. And you also get one of these cheap small wrenches that are basically stamped metal to remove the nozzle. Just like every other Iwata airbrush I reviewed in the hand, this airbrush feels incredible. It has a nice solid build to it and a strong durable chrome finish. Now the HPB Plus kind of sits in the middle between the Custom Micron and the Iwata Eclipse. There are a bunch of differences between these three airbrushes, but the most obvious one is the nozzle size. The HPB Plus has a nozzle size of 0.2 millimeters, which sits right in between the custom micron and the eclipse at 0.18 and 0.35 millimeters respectively. To me, all three of these airbrushes have basically perfect control and the response rate on all three is identical. You pull back the smallest amount, you always get the same amount of paint. Now, if you're looking to paint fine lines, any airbrush 0.35 millimeters or smaller is gonna give you about the same size line. What separates a true detail brush like the Harden Steenbeck Infinity or the Iwata Custom Micron is a very acute spray angle. Nozzle size is important, but it's really secondary because with a narrow spray angle and a low airspeed like what you get with the Custom Micron, an airbrush sprays a smaller volume of paint, giving you more control. The way to get any airbrush 0.35 millimeters or smaller to spray a line with, similar to a Custom Micron, is just by holding it very close to the surface you're painting. So in this clip here, I'm spraying the High Performance Plus at 20 PSI using Createx Illustration Colors, diluted about 10% with distilled water. Since the needle is basically touching this piece of paper, my line width is nearly identical to a Custom Micron. Now these two pieces of paper, both showing the spray test, came directly from my water with the airbrushes. If you pause the video here, see if you could decide which one is the Custom Micron and which one is the High Performance Plus. I wish they used the same color paint because the blue looks a little smaller because it's a lighter value, but to me, the line width is nearly identical. And the light blue one on the left is the Iwata Custom Micron and the black one on the right is the High Performance Plus. So the High Performance Plus definitely sprays a thin line just like the Micron and basically any airbrush 0.35 millimeters or smaller but you get way more control with the Custom Micron, and I'll talk about that later. In my testing, this airbrush sprays a lot closer to an Iwata Eclipse than it does to a Custom Micron. Again, we'll talk about that later, but for now, let's break down this airbrush, see the internal parts. As stated earlier, the High Performance Plus is equipped with a 0.2 millimeter needle and nozzle combo. The rear handle has a cutaway. You could use this to quickly flush out any clogs in your airbrush. And on the very back of the handle, there's a small knob, and you could use this to adjust how far back you could pull on the trigger. When it's fully open like this, I could pull all the way back. And as I screw it down, you can see I can't pull back at all. So it may be useful for some of you new painters. Just like all other Iwata airbrushes, this one's super easy to break down. After removing the rear handle, the needle, and the small chuck, we could unscrew the needle spring assembly. The threading on this is very narrow, which is nice because this allows you to adjust the spring tension as you pull back on the trigger. The tighter you have this screwed in, the better seal you'll get between the needle and the nozzle. So it's up to you. It's personal preference. I usually screw these down pretty tight, but I know some people like it opened a little bit more so that the trigger is lighter. And this spring assembly is basically what you see on all other Iwata airbrushes. I love this build and I love that the lever is connected to this. So it's really easy to break down and put back together. The trigger on this one is very similar to what you'd see in the Custom Micron. You can see that there's a small notch on the bottom here. This goes toward the back of the airbrush, so when you pull back, it sits flush with the body of the airbrush. The trigger has a nice build to it. I have no complaints. It also has a bit of knurling on it. That way it gives some extra grip for your finger. And after unscrewing the cap, you can see that it's kind of this old school design where the nozzle screws into the body of the airbrush. Nothing wrong with this design. It works great, sprays well. It's just a bit more annoying to uh, replace the nozzle. The nozzle head design is very simple. This is similar to what you'd see on the Neo for Iwata. So all in all, it's a great airbrush, really solid build quality, just what you'd expect from any Iwata. One thing I love about this version of the airbrush is that it doesn't have a micro air control valve, also known as a Mac valve. In this line of Iwata High Performance Plus airbrushes, there's a group of them called the Highline brushes, 
which are equipped with that micro air control valve on the bottom. The one you're looking at right now is called the HPTH, and this is part of the Highline line. You can see on the front here you have this MAC valve. A common misconception that I see, especially among new airbrush artists, is thinking that if you screw this down, you're going to get a thinner line. And it doesn't work like that at all. All the MAC valve does is adjust the air pressure at the nozzle. Of course, you can technically get a thinner line with lower air pressure, but in order to do that, you need to dilute your paint, reduce it so that it's thinner, and you have to move closer to the surface. So if you want the option to adjust your air pressure right on your airbrush, I guess it's cool, but for me, it's not needed. It's another part that can break, and even on the ones that I have, I never use it. So I'm very happy that the HPB does not have a MAC valve. And if given the option for me to paint with one with or without a MAC valve, I'd always choose one without all day long. Moving along to the spray test, the first thing I'm doing is checking the spray angle, spraying with the needle fully retracted at 20 PSI. Measuring this in Photoshop, the spray angle is right around 16 degrees. A spray angle like this at 16.1 degrees is excellent for detail. On this chart of every other airbrush I reviewed on this channel, you can see that it's very similar to the Badger Sotar 22. 20 and the Badger Extreme Patriot. This falls in line with what you'd expect with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And just like all my other airbrush reviews, just keep in mind that these numbers are not perfect. This is not precise data. It's just approximations of the spray characteristics. And of course, spraying through the anemometer at three and a half inches away at 20 PSI, I get an airspeed right around 5.6 meters per second. An airspeed like this at 20 PSI is great. You'll have no problem getting close to the surface to paint in those fine details. And also, it's a bit more forgiving than something like a Micron because you could spray slightly thicker paint through it. You don't have to over reduce it. But this higher airspeed makes it feel a lot closer to an Iwata Eclipse than it does to an Iwata Micron. The reason for that is just because it's going to spray a higher volume of paint. Of course, you could lower your PSI and reduce your paint, but when you're spraying with a lower pressure, you may notice that there's some stippling patterns in the paint. So in the last portrait painting lesson on this channel, I decided to switch over to the HPB Plus to see how it worked on this one. I was using my custom Micron Takumi before this, so it's nice to see how they compare. So this part is going to be subjective just because I'm talking about my opinions. And as I said earlier, painting with this airbrush feels very similar to the Iwata Eclipse. With that slightly higher airspeed and wider spray angle than the Micron, I definitely had to get a lot closer to paint in thin lines. I also noticed that it was spraying a higher volume of paint, so I needed to be very careful just to not pull too far back on that trigger. But the trigger control was outstanding. It's just like the Eclipse and the Micron. Every time you pull back a certain amount, it's the same amount of paint every time. And as I've said in all my other reviews, that's really, really important because with any airbrush, you're going to build up muscle memory. And I'm happy to say that it was extremely comfortable the whole time painting with it. Not once did it clog or spit any paint and it atomized it perfectly. And the majority of the time, if you notice that an airbrush isn't spraying paint well, most of the time it's actually the paint rather than the airbrush. So you always want to make sure that you're using a high quality airbrush paint where the pigments are ground down to a very small size. Remember that a reducer can never make the pigments inside the paint smaller, all it's going to do is adjust the viscosity. So go with a good airbrush paint. It's really important. Something like Golden High Flow Acrylics, anything by Createx, or Comart paints. And the last thing I'm doing is checking the nozzle for any air leaks using some soapy water. I'm holding down the air with my left thumb. We can see no bubbles, so that's great. No leaks. So that's going to do it for this review of the Iwata HPB Plus. All around, it's a really great airbrush. It's definitely a professional painting tool. Usually this airbrush goes for around 200 US dollars. I found that on Amazon for $159, so I had to pick it up. So that's about $40 less than usual and about $10 less than the Iwata Eclipse HPCS. So it's a really great price. Hopefully it stays like that. Of course, I'll have a link for this one down below. If you're thinking about buying this one, I highly recommend it. So that's going to complete this review. I hope this one was helpful for any of you who are thinking about picking this one up. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be back here next week for a new painting lesson. I hope to see you back then, so be well and take care.